Hello everyone, this is 3D Printed Animatronic Creature Part 25, Servo Movements. I put all servos, everything, every movement on BSA software. So I'm controlling everything with the software. And as you see here, I have a servo controller. And I'm only using 10 channels. But as this is a, a discontinued servo controller, I've had this one for several years, and the company was RC Endurance, and it's a wonderful controller. And I wish they were still, you know, in existence. They they were really big, I believe it was in 2007, but I, but it was not too long ago they I went to the website and it was gone. But there's several other servo controllers out there to choose from and, and some of them are quite good but this is the setup here but uh this setup here is uh one through 25 so it's a 25 servo controller and you have to plug up a usb and also a power but to set this up and once again uh these servo uh pins go from 1 to 25 but BSA software goes from 0 up I mean you can you can do a lot of servos on BSA but as as you see here I'm going to show you how I set it up I probably showed this before but I keep wanting to show it and then I'll record it so maybe y'all can see it better but BSA software is set up by as you see here I'm putting the uh, the name in that certain area that it needs to be but as far as setting up uh like as you see here the type of controller and the port controller and then all the names and then what i do i i just start laying out these little bar graphs and you see this little window right here it pops up and you can see me adjust the so-called little servo in the direction and each time I move that, like for instance, if it's the jaw, it will move in real time right next to me when I'm doing this. So in a way, it's kind of like doing stop motion or go motion, you know, and, you know, right there in front of you. You'll move a little bit and you'll, you'll see your movement. But like if I had audio, and, and later on, we'll have a lot audio set up, and you and you'll see where I have the audio graph, you know, an indicator, and then if I say a word, I can, uh, you know, uh, break down that word and how many syllables, which is if a, a one syllable word would be two movements, open close, and that would be two movements. But as you see here, I set the first movement and press play. And now I'm going to adjust it. So I come back and I just start playing it again. And then I'll see that next movement. And as you see here, it slowly builds up with movements. And as you, you see, it's it's a lot slower. And then it, I just like doing things slow at first. And then I can reduce the bar graph into any speed necessary and sometimes it can be too fast you know i've tried all different ways or whatever until i develop some type of routine or with audio files but as you see here i just press play on that and this is what it's going to show me and it shows me the whole routine that i have listed on that programming of the bsa software but once again you know i I like what I see, and I says, okay, I'm going to make the eyes blink faster, or I'm going to make the eyebrow move. But a lot of these movements are already done that I've done before. And what I do, as you see here, I'm doing the eyelids right here, and I copied and pasted and copied and pasted again, but I made them faster. And you'll see on this movement right here, at the very end, when I press play, at the very end of that routine, you'll see how fast the eyelids blink compared to the first. Now I'll just add the skull uh, lid or the skull cap to it and 
that I'm going to go ahead and continue. As you see here, I'll just fit it in place. But then I'm, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do another program and see if I can get this a little bit a longer routine. And as you see here, I'm still trying to make it to where I can get these eyelids faster. Get everything pretty much faster. And just as you see here, I'll press play and then I'll see this routine again. Which is not a whole lot of movements. It's just like the brow might go up, down, up, down. Or the eyelids might blink four or five times. Or the jaw opens slow. But then I'll kind of speed, speed it up as you see here. You'll notice the jaw moving a lot faster. But a lot of this, what I'm doing here now, is I'm just testing everything on VSA. That's all the movements. And just make sure everything has clearances. Make sure there ain't bumping. Now, I would love to have, you know, to I mean, I'm trying to design this as lowest cost as I can. And yet be dependable in, as far as, because it's going to have to have skin. And the skin's going to be somewhat expensive itself also. But once again, I'm just trying to make a, a good animatronic with uh, silicone skin realistic. And, but, you know, as far as, like I said in the last video, I mean, it would be cool to have one all metal. And I would love it to have bearings in all moving parts because that would make things a lot more fluid. But to have all that milled is, would be quite expensive. But there's companies that would do that. And I could probably do that on a smaller scale. But as you see here on the VSA right here, I'm going to set up a longer program, as you see, this routine. But once again, when I have a, a planned routine where my voice is added or a character's voice is added, I can sit there and animate the entire thing and have an audio file to go by to see the movements and to add expression and when it has a skin it's just going to be it, it's i'm going to try my best to make this thing look alive and also what i did was is i picked my camera up and i started holding the camera and to just give some different shots as i'm just giving a different look for y'all to see you know is and the perspective of it and just to give you you know a better visual of the animatronic just instead of it just on the tripod you know i like what i see so far now the next process would be everything should be pretty much uh you know I'll, everything should be just kind of dialed in adding some uh nylon nuts to everything just make sure everything is is tight make sure things are right maybe you do some adjustments on the uh the chest to make things a little a little bit more narrow and to keep things kind of smaller and tight and then i can start designing the core and then the core will be finalized the animatronic will be finalized then then when I do the when I start doing the core work, it's final, as far as the animatronic part. But then I, when the core is done, I can start sculpting, doing the digital sculpt in ZBrush and or and and or in in Blender. But I just prefer ZBrush. But as you see here, here's the movements that I was getting it, and some like once again, some of the speeds were a little fast. But what? Once again, you know, when the skin's on it, it might not look as fast. But I'm just excited now, and I'm getting that close time to start thinking about what the skin's going to look like on it and have it a realistic-looking creature. I hope y'all like it. But once again, I appreciate everybody, and thanks for all the subscribers and, and and the comments and the thumbs up it really helps this channel and and even if you share it you know you know i'm trying to keep this channel going and and we'll set up a patreon and we'll have these files of, available for everybody but once again thanks everybody for everything and uh y'all have a good day and later